Hello. This is a continuation of the video series where we talk about testing strategies for ACS, Organic Chemistry Final. With that, so we'll be moving on to nuclear fluid substitutions and eliminations. With that, so for this one, this is going to be a classic example of trying to make carbon-carbon bonds by using a, a terminal alkyne. So if you see this alkyne here, uh, one of the common ways to do that is to is to either make this bond here or this bond here. If you're going to make, uh, if we want to try to make that bond, what you need to do is you need to make, have this part be your nucleophile, and you'd need to have a bromine there. The other way that you could do it is you could have this be your nucleophile, and then put your, um, say, a bromine your leaving group here. If we do it, if we do it with the blue, okay, which would be, in this case. Um, which one is it? Oh, it would be this case here. Okay. You're going to have to have your um, leaving group sitting on this secondary carbon, right? Because it only has two. It has two other other um, carbons attached to it. This really just works on um, primary. So like that. So we're not going to do that. Um, so like that. The other idea would be to somehow um, would be to, to have this be your nucleophile. I would say that broke and then have methyl bromide here. So like that. so, so that's good. So these are uh, probably how the, they're going to snatch together. Now here, um, if you had excess base, you could actually make a double bond here. You'd need a second bromine, maybe say here, uh, in order to make that. So it's definitely, so it's not going to be this. So the question becomes, you know, which way you need to do. Normally you'd, you'd say, when you're designing the synthesis, you, these are the two components you need to do mix those two together, um, nothing's going to happen. They're just going to kind of wave at each other. What you need to do is you actually need to get it into in, the alkyne into this form right here. Uh, so, because the question is, in order to make this, you have to generate this. So this is going to be the answer, so be careful. Okay, so which are the possible uh, reaction products for this? So you have to be, um, so the key to this one is to make sure that um, the, wherever your leaving group is, and so in this case it's the bromine, you have to have hydrogen on the, the adjacent um, carbon, or excuse me, yeah, the adjacent carbon be 180 degrees from it, right? So this circle here, this is the front carbon, and then there's a carbon behind it, that you can't see, right? But you can see the things sticking out from it. So they have to be what's called anti periplanar, which is simply being 180 degrees from each other. And so for this case, right, you have the uh, you have the hydrogen going up, you have the bromine going down, right? So when that happens, this is going to grab it, collapse, kick this way. These two become these collapse together, and to make a um, the double bond between the two carbons that are right on top of. When that happens, the hydrogen and the uh, and this like the um, propyl group go get on the same side. So for that one, it would be um, so you you remove this. So you got the deuterium on the other side. So you got on the front, you're going to have deuterium, um, cyclopropyl, okay? and then this is going to be on the same side as that. Okay, and then these are on the, these are on the back. So this is just a, a phenyl. Where that's just you're going to make this. But what you can also do is hold the back carbon fix and slide this around until it's in. So you hold that the, front, the back one fixed. C six H five. But remember, this is this is just heavy hydrogen. I mean, it, it reacts similarly to another type of you know any other type of hydrogen. So if you slide this like that, that's going to slide here. That's going to slide here, that's going to slide here, so put the deuterium up there, um, cyclopropyl there, and the hydrogen here. Now you've got essentially a hydrogen uh, 100 degrees from the bromine, and so now you can get this. So here, the two hydrogens are going to be um, cis to each other, right? so it would be like this, and then the cyclopropyl and the phenyl would be over here. So these are the two. Um, possible products. Now this one would probably be easy. 
um, the favored, right, because they're in the trans position. Uh, the, the largest groups are trans, but that's not what he said. He just said possible relation. So you're going to make them both. Okay, so this is another one where you have possible products for the dehalohydrogenation, which is just what we did before. It's just an, an E2 type mechanism. But for now, we've got the cis, one chloro, two isopropyl. Okay, so remember we said if you have, you need to have the, um, what is it, the, the leaving group. In this case, it's a chlorine, right? 180 degrees from it, you're going to need to have a, um, you need to have a hydrogen. So, so for here, you do have this hydrogen there, and then this is a, a CH2. So you're going to have both. So if this is coming up, so it's on a wedge, you need to have um, the hydrogen going down, hydrogen going down. So ha so it's going to make this one, it's make this double bond. So the base is going to come, rip this away, collapse down, take that to make this. The other possible product would be to have the base come in, grab this, collapse, kick this away, and so you would end up with that. You're not going to hit, because you have a, um, a small base, it's going to be E2, so you're not going to get a rearrangement when you need to get this product, um, and you're not going to have, so since this is a leaving group, uh, that's, you know, it's going to leave, it's going to be not going to be on your, your final molecule, so it can't be that. So we could have just limited that right there. But because it's a small base, you're, gonna, you're not going to get this rearrangement. Both of these are going to be possible. Now, if instead we came in here and we did the same reaction, but we did the trans, so now what's happening is this is um, the chlorines on a on a dash. So what we need is we need a hydrogen on a wedge over here, along with one over here. Right? So again, you're going to have like that. So you're not going to be able to do it here because this uh, isopropyl groups in the way. So like that. So it would need to be a hydrogen here. There is a hydrogen, but it's, remember it's sticking down. It's not that 180 degrees from it. So you're only going to be able to make the bond using this hydrogen. So in this case, this would be the only product. Okay, again, leaving group right there. It's an E2 reaction, um, so it can't be that. But there's no hydrogen to be able to make the double bond. It just it can't be that. So be careful. So for this one, which carbocation is unlikely to undergo rearrangement? So the reason, you have to remember why they go to, um, to rearrangements. It's to get to a higher order. So like that, so if it's, you have a primary carbocation, it's going to want to go to secondary or tertiary. Secondary is going to want to go up to tertiary. So um, everybody wants to get um, you know, to, to that higher order. So you just need to, really what you need to do is look to see if any of these are um, either secondary or tertiary, particularly for tertiary. So this one here. Right? It's got one carbon attached to it, so it's primary. This carbon has two carbons attached, so it's secondary. This one, ah, this carbon here has one, two, three carbons attached to it, so it's tertiary. And this one, right? that carbon has two other uh, carbons attached, so it's secondary. So it needs to be this one. There's no incentive for this one to, to undergo rearrangement uh, because it's already in the tertiary. Or even a tertiary carbocation. So that's less likely to, to undergo it. Okay, so here's one of those crazy uh, word problems. So you misread the literature to form this reaction uh, with only half the recommended volume right, of solvent. So that is, a how should the how total, uh, should, how should the total reaction time change compared to the original literature? So all they're saying is, if you change the concentration, how does that, that affect it? So for SN1, right, the reason why it's an SN1 is there's only one substrate, substrate in that rate equation. Okay, so the rate is going to be equal to K times whatever has the leaving group, in this case that, so it's ethyl bromine. Okay, if we're running under SN1, that's what it would be. If you're running under SN2, the reason for 2 is there, so you have both the uh, um, electrophile and your nucleophile. Okay, so the rate K times um, your ethyl bromide plus your, um, in this case, your hydroxyl. 
Okay, so the uh, um, so we know it's an SM2. Why do, why do we know it's SM2? Well, this is this bromide is is primary. It's going to be really hard because it has only one other carbon attached to it. This is going to be really hard to do. Um, the uh, um, have this leave from SM1 um, because we generate a primary carbon cation with no other way to help stabilize it. Because even if we rearranged it, we just go over here, which is also primary. Okay, so if you put in half the amount of solvent, right, that means you've doubled the concentration. So it's so you've doubled this concentration here, so it's 2x, 2x, right? And so that means that the rate, um, so that that becomes 4. So like that, so, so instead of being 4 hours, it would be 1 hour, say. So like that, so if you, if you dumped in twice as much solvent as you needed, right, these would be half. And so then the rate would only be like it would, it would, um, it would be a quarter of the speed. So so like that's so okay. We're gonna hang on. It should only be I got that backwards. Right? It should only be a quarter. It should only take a quarter of my time, right? Because the rate is four times faster. You gotta be careful. Keep a nice look up on that one. But you gotta think it through. What is it saying? It's only gonna take a quarter of amount of time. Because you've doubled, essentially, you've doubled the, um, the concentration of your substrates. Right? Because it's it's now four times the original. Because it's four times the original, the reaction time should only be a quarter of what it, would, what it should be. So be careful. Okay, which of these reactions, in terms of, of likely reaction speed, will undergo the reaction of SM2? This one is again, it's going to be primary, secondary, tertiary. So for these, we want. So for here, right? So this is where your um, that's where your um, halide is, and so for this one, right? This is primary. Okay, this is secondary right, because your right, this one only had one other carbon attached. This had two. This one had three. Okay. And uh, now this one is sitting on the double bond. That's never going to go unless undergo an SM two. So so this would actually not work at all. So it's really this one here that would be the uh, that would be the fastest. So, like that. so this one is simply not going to go. Okay. Which of these molecules is the weakest nucleophile? And so remember, uh, weak nucleophile usually means weak base. Okay. Weak base means right, strong acid. The acidic version is going to be strong, right? stuff like that. And so, really, what we do is if we may had the H version of this, this is how I would think about it. If we had the H version, which one of these is the most acidic? Right? So the uh, um, so for here you have OH, OH, NH, OH. Um, so here, 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 here. That's where the most acidic one would be. Um, OHs are, are closer to iodine on the pH table. Nitrogen, so it's definitely not going to be that. Here, both of these have, are next to a, a, um, a pi bond. This one is not. Right? It's just a regular CH2, so it's not going to be that. So we're down to the oh, down to these two. Right? But this one has the two fluorines. This one has two atoms that are um, more electronegative, right? The two fluorines. So this is going to be the weakest, uh, the weakest nucleophile because the OH version of this, the first maybe the is the strongest acid. So, uh, which reaction would work best for synthesizing this ether? Um, so again, it's very similar to what we were doing on the uh, um, with, with the terminal alkyne. And you could either have this be your nucleophile and put the bromine there, or you could have this, the, uh, the phenol, be your nucleophile and have the one of the things we can do right away is these will not undergo SM2 reactions um, because the, the bromine is sitting here on the on the double bond, so we can automatically get rid of these. Bang! It's not going to be a problem. So for here, the problem is going to be if you mix these two together. Yes, this is a fantastic nucleophile, but if you mix this together, what it would happen is you would just this nucleophile. Bring your here would just simply deprotonate this, and so you get really expensive um, benzene. So 
for the gun, so this isn't going to work. This is what you need to do in here because you need to put SM into your gun to get blood, get the draw meter back. So um, bring your ember because things that are the nuclear files are generally the bases as well. This one would go in and just rip off the acidic proton here and get rid of your nuclear file. Go to that. So if you get rid of these right away, these two, because of the leaving group is on a double bond, not gonna, not gonna happen. Here, the egg, you can get rid of this because you've got acidic um, hydrogen, acidic hydrogen here, so let's go with this one. Last slide, so uh, which would be the major product for the following reaction? Okay, so here you've got the epoxy. Okay, so, we got, so you have to remember about the um, differences between under acidic conditions or under basic conditions. Under acidic conditions, what's going to happen is okay, this is going to come in and grab up, so that, I'm sorry, not there, there. Okay. Don't forget, whenever you have an acid catalyst, 99 times out of 100, the first step of the reaction is going to be your substrate interacting with that catalyst. So, still it seems to be. So under here, you end up getting um, this reaction. Um, so, and then you can get these two resonance forms. Like that. You can either get the um, that bond protein to make this. Positive charge there, or you could get that bond protein to make this resonance form. Like that. This is going to be a lot more stable right, because this is tertiary. So this is if your alcohol is going to come in and attack water, your alcohol, whatever, it's going to see this a lot more than it's going to see this, right, because that's the secondary. So it's going to see, it's going to attack there. Okay. So for this one, we know we're going to attack on the higher order side, so, so of the, um, because it's under acidic conditions, you're going to want to put the alcohol that, that you're adding here. Right? But we could have gotten rid of these two. Um, right away because you're not going to get a substitution of your alcohol for that for this oxygen here. Okay. So but for under acidic conditions you want the you want to add to the um, add to the higher um, higher order side. And it all has to do with the fact that this carbocation is going to be a lot more stable. Okay. So what you're doing is so, so this would be the if you wanted to make this product, what you'd need to do is do it under basic conditions, because for then it's it's more of an it's an SN2 reaction where that comes in, and with SN2 it's steric, right? So you're going to have secondary side versus tertiary side. It's going to be a lot easier to draw in um, here, and that's it. So you'd have to run it under basic conditions in order to make this product. So, okay. Good luck.